both solar heliophysics as well as astronomy thrives on data. Uh, more the data you have, we get more understanding about the uh, system. And Sun is our own uh, um, star, our dearmost star, so understanding them is much more important for our everyday life. So this mission, Aditya, which, when it was conceived initially, uh, with the uh, with support from uh, our uh, uh, Professor Yuar Rao, along with Dr. Srikumar and Professor G. Srinivasan, uh, we made sure that we will have a unique data set which is not available from any other missions uh, in internationally. So the seven payloads what was conceived for this particular mission will provide a unique set of data which is currently not available from any other missions, which will provide us new insight into the solar and heliophysics community in India and provides some important aspects like the, uh, the initiation of the coronal mass ejections, the speed at which it gets initiated and uh, some wave bands which are very important for the earth uh, ionospheric uh, uh, connections like uh, near ultraviolet band and uh, the uh, high energy particles which is uh, high energy radiations as well as, as well as particles which is coming from the solar flares and coronal mass ejections. So these are the informations uh, which would be available from this particular mission which will allow us to understand the sun, its dynamics as well as the inner heliosphere which is an important element for the current day technology as well as the space weather aspects of it. Now when we, the sun becomes angry, there are two types of process which happens. One is solar flares, that means electromagnetic radiation which reaches the earth in eight minutes. But along with that, there is a mass which is also ejected out in form of plasma and that can take about two to four days to reach the earth. What we are looking for from the Aditya Alvan mission is to see the impact of solar flares as well as coronal mass ejections as they come to the earth. We have instruments which look at not only in the sun direction but also in other directions, for example perpendicular to ecliptic or in the earth directions. The impact is that we need to see when the sun becomes quite angry, what are the ways in which it is affecting the planet earth and L1 point being at point L1 which is just 1% away from the earth, it is able to provide us a lot of new informations of the plasma and the electromagnetic radiations which is reaching the planet earth. But there are limitations of looking at the sun from the ground because you can only see the lower atmosphere of the sun. So this was very, very important that we could go to the space and this is a fantastic opportunity. Originally, more than 10 years back, we were only looking at a small satellite program and then Professor Yuar Rao suddenly came up with this idea, why are you be taking baby steps? We should think big, we should go to much longer distance. And then this opportunity came in, the Lagrangian one mission, the entire country, all the scientific institution got very much highly motivated. There are multiple payloads were then proposed. So eventually now we have a Lagrangian 1 observatory class mission. And as you heard from my colleagues that it is a multi-wavelength observatory. So that's very important to have the shorter wavelength coverage from the space. And in addition, the ground-based observations are also important. So a combination of the ground-based telescope and the space-based platform is very, very important. These uh, uh, events are crucial to monitor the near-Earth space weather because these can have an effect on the life on Earth. Uh, if you remember Quebec, there was an event when the power lines were snapped a few years ago. That was because of an extreme solar uh, event. So to keep an eye on the surroundings of uh, Earth, we need these measurements. And apart from that, uh, for solar wind observations also, uh, these measurements will be uh, crucial. First of all, let me again tell you that India will be the third or ISRO will be the third space agency to have a mission at L1 point. And I just mentioned that it is multi-wavelength, multi-instrument and multi-direction and it measures particle, field and radiations. 
So you don't have such kind of satellites existing at L1 point so far and currently. That makes Aditya L1 absolutely unique because we are going to measure remotely, in situ and particles and fields. I was also mentioning about multi-direction and that is coming from the aspects payload which stands for Aditya Solar and Particle Experiments. And this is going to measure particles ranging from 100 EVs going to several MEVs. Which is essential for us to know because when the CMEs are happening or the uh, sun is quite angry, the plasma which is coming out from the sun ranges from several EVs to several MEVs. And therefore, we should know in what direction the plasma is coming and whether the plasma is getting accelerated in between when it comes from sun towards earth. And therefore, there is a multi-direction information which is available from the aspects payload because it consists of two sensors, Swiss and STEP, essentially giving you in two different energy bands. And therefore, we'll be able to quantify the CME, CIRs and all the processes which is happening on the sun which gives out coronal mass ejections.